you have the option of giving them a full refund. If you do, don't expect to have the item sent back. Question from Jason here. He says, how do you ship video games and DVDs? So I'm just going to assume that you mean the DVDs that are, or the video games that are like DVDs that are disc type. Because the other types, uh, well, like old Nintendo ones, I probably still would ship it in a poly envelope. But the old PlayStation ones that are in like the CD hard case, I wouldn't do that. Those things crack all the time. I would put those in some kind of a box. Um, I have one um, that I use sometimes. But I don't think that's what you're asking about. I think you're asking about the typical PS2, Xbox type games and regular DVDs. So I ship them in here. And if I feel at all uncomfortable about it because the case isn't in great shape or it's condensing down, um, you can put bubble inside of the case. Actually, I've done that before. Um, but more than likely, I would just put some hard card cardboard on top. I just cut out a piece of cardboard the size of this, two pieces, slide it in, slide the disc in between if that makes you feel better. But that's usually how I do it. Everybody else out there, if you've got a better solution, tell us how you do it. Leave it in the comments below and maybe Jason can read it. I have a question from, I don't know how to pronounce this one, Trachodon, T-R-A-C-H-O-D-O-N. Sounds like, sounds like Trachodon to me. <laughs> anyway, I'm curious, you have a distinct YouTube garb, uh, like your hat and sunglasses. How do you normally dress for your school teaching? <laughs> so, well, believe it or not, I actually wear a hat and sunglasses, I don't know, 70% of the time. Um, I don't, obviously, when I'm in class. So I just wear a polo shirt of some sort, most of the time. Doesn't always have to be a polo shirt, but could be a, you know, I don't know, sweater. <laughs> button up who knows anyway uh most of the time a polo shirt a golf style polo shirt and uh, khaki pants belt shoes that's about it hey question from cynthia here she asks where did we get the feature presentation sign hanging in the back so it is not a vintage sign it is a a reproduction if you will for an old theater and i thought it was cool and we got it from a garage sale and i just had the garage sale here let me pull it up it was entitled Garage Sale That Kept On Giving and one that looked like a boot sale in England. <laughs> That's the name of the video. So you type that thing in and you will find the video where we bought that one. I don't know. I think we paid two, three bucks for it. All right. I really like this question. This question is from Carrie. When doing a multi-quantity listing, is it best to list the total quantity from the start or update it as needed? All right, so this is actually debated. So let, let's take the Inaman, for instance. Uh, I very well could put, you know, could have put like 1,500 Inaman on there, and it wouldn't have made a bit of difference whatsoever. It really wouldn't have. But I can tell you this. As, as I get down closer to, you know, 150 or whatever, when people see the quantity going down and they think this is the end of the end, then they're going to buy it. So... I think that it depends on the item is how I would answer that question. So if you want people to feel like they better get it now, then I would put a lower quantity. If it's not an item that people are like, oh my gosh, if I don't get it, I'm not going to get it now, then it's easier, just no hassle to put the exact quantity. So I think it depends on, the, depends on you, what you want to do and what you want to fuss with and what you don't and what the item is. So... I know that's not a concrete answer, but I think it'll help, Carrie. Thanks. All right, here is a really good question from Steven, and he says, when listing remotes, how do you figure out what VCRs, DVD players, televisions, etc., they are compatible with? This is a great question. So basically, I steal somebody else's work. So if you go to sold listings for a particular remote, and this is assuming it's not a one-off, right? And then you might need to go look it up somewhere, and I don't even know the answer to that. But a lot of remotes, if you go to the sold listings, the one that's sold for the most, or the ones that sell often, have the compatible brands in the title, or at least some of them, not brands, the compatible models in the, in the title. Or you can scroll down and look, and sometimes they have it in the description or in the uh, item specifics. And so basically, I look for the ones that have sold 
for the most amount of money. And usually those people have already done the hard work, right? Um, they've already done it. They've already, or maybe they didn't do it. Maybe somebody did it, you know, eight years ago and we've just keep stealing the title. But go to sold listings and find a listing that has already done the compatibility for it. And you are much, much more likely to sell it if you have those compatible models in there. That's a great question. It's a question from Pro Wrestling EGO. What states are you missing on the tag collection? I wish I could tell you. Maybe I should keep a checklist, you know? I am a teacher. I probably should do that. You know, it's like taking the role. If I just have a list right there, maybe I can uh, figure out which states I have and which states I don't. But, you know, now that they're up, it's like, eh, maybe. You know what? I'm going to pay Reagan to do it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> maybe they could be part of their homeschool lesson, right? We could have a map of the states with all the names in there. She could go around checking them off. That's a good geography lesson. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Thank you, Pro Wrestling E-G-O. We appreciate the question. Appreciate the idea. And also, it doesn't matter. You know, people like semi-tags. I'd just love to have them. It doesn't matter if I have that exact same tag or not. I'm actually considering taking one side of the shed, maybe even the back to start with, and just covering the entire outside part of, the, of one of the walls of the shed with plates. I still also have tons of space up here, even if they're duplicates. So... Anyway, thanks for the question, and there's my shameless plug to get people to send me plates. And look what my wife just brought me. In Blue Ridge Mama Sweet. Fresh picked strawberries, too. Thanks. I have a question from Renee. She says, how do I issue a refund? My first refund. She's never had a return before. Somehow the eBay system is not letting me do this. Do I need to wait for the item to be returned before I issue the refund? So, no, you don't. If you had an actual return request... You have the option of giving them a full refund. If you do, don't expect to have the item sent back because they've already got their money. They have no incentive to send it back. So typically you would wait and then they would send you a message in the messaging system. So go back and look to see if they actually have done a return request. If they haven't done a return request, then I'm only aware of one way to give them a refund and that's to go to the PayPal, go into... Um, click down the down arrow on the listing and other options or something like that and click PayPal on it and you can go there and give them a refund but I don't suggest doing that unless you know you're doing some kind of a partial refund deal and they're gonna keep it but if they're gonna do a full return make them ship it back to you and then give them the refund but you should have a message either in your email or, or both really in your uh, eBay messaging system so I would wait before I gave them a return unless that's part of your deal because you don't want to pay the return shipping and some people do that. I typically don't do that unless it really was my fault. So hopefully that helps. All right, I have a question from Mississippi Gypsy, which is a great name, by the way. Uh, when you put in the shipping for a flat rate box, when listing an item, do you just type in the number like regional box A would be I think 768 instead of doing calculated shipping. So I'm gonna try to explain this to you without using any uh, computer screens or anything like that. So th the answer to that is no, there is no flat rate for region A, like 768. So really what you can do is if you know it will fit in a region A box, then put two pounds calculated shipping. That's what you need to do because essentially Shipping in a region A is like shipping a four pound item, three pound item, two, two pound, six ounce item. It's like shipping it at the two pound rate. So I would do calculated shipping, two pound rate if you know you can fit it in a region A box. Hopefully that helps. All right, I hit it this way and I'm like, oh, it's backwards. I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool though. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do it by looking at the window and you looking back at me. Most of the time, Boots is out there on that little ledge trying to chase moths. So anyway, here's the question from Marichelle, I guess the name is. A bit confused which shipping boxes to use, priority rate versus flat rate priority. Should I buy my own boxes? Help, prayer hand, prayer hand, prayer hand. <laughs> well, uh, I gave I, on this answer here, I just linked a video and that's really my answer to the question. There are multiple reasons. You can and should use all of those at different times in different circumstances. 
So there is not a one answer or one, I mean, there's not one way to answer that question. So I gave you a video that answers it and it's a shameless plug because it's my video and I'll make like a, a penny off of it. So <laughs> hopefully you go watch it and don't forget to watch the, the, the boring Macari commercial at the, <laughs> at the beginning of the video, which it seems like is on every single video these days. It's entitled free shipping or calculated shipping or flat rate shipping on eBay. This is how I decide. So hopefully that answers your question. I've got Turner with me. I gotta answer a question, buddy. <laughs> All right, Donald asks, Kevin, what is the brand type scale you use? The one on your bench with the blue bottom. So, I don't know. Can y'all see that? We've been out here making Mother's Day cards. Yeah. Can you see that or not? Right behind the crayons. That is an Accutech scale, and the small one I use as well is also an Accutech. I think. I love these questions because I can give shameless plugs to my links, <laughs> to my affiliate links, at any rate. And I think they're both in the description, but the blue one is a 440 pound limit one. It's not as precise in my opinion, so it has its uses, but I would say half the time, more than half the time, I just use my little, my little Accutech and I don't, <laughs> you're goofy grinning, you can relax. I just use my uh, regular one. So oh, I see Reagan coming in here, but both of them are in the description. And if you don't click on the uh, links, that's fine, but they you can just look them up on eBay. And uh, the other one has a much smaller limit, I think maybe 50 pounds, I think. It might not even be that high. At any rate, hopefully that helps, Donald. Bye. <laughs>